And joining us now is Ambassador Mark Regev, Senior Advisor to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Ambassador, I always appreciate your time. I thank you for being with us. Just want to start our conversation Thanks by asking, me. was the Prime Minister aware of this document about Hamas plans that the New York Times reported on before the October 7th attack? No, but, you know, we in Israel are, are very troubled because on October 7th they took us by surprise. And we pride ourselves in this country for having excellent intelligence services. And the fact that we didn't have warning or that the warning didn't reach decision makers, that has to be looked into because it's a failure. And when this war is over, I'm sure we'll have an inquiry, independent inquiries. We've done it in the past. There will be our parliamentary inquiry maybe as well. Uh, we have to get to the bottom of this. We have to find what lessons need to be learned. So, Ambassador, just to reconfirm what you're saying, so the Prime Minister was not aware of this report that was uh, divulged uh, throughout the uh, Israeli intelligence community. So, I'm not sure it filtered up to the top. I'm not sure it even reached the top of military intelligence. We have to look at what happened. It's clear that there was a failure. And we have to find out exactly what happened, because obviously we don't want to repeat the same mistake. We, we live in a, a tough neighborhood, and it's important that, that our intelligence services do their job effectively and that reports reach the people who they need to reach. So, Ambassador, let's talk about uh, what is going on right now. This truce is no longer, this pause is no longer a pause. There is uh, the war to resume. And I was just asking Richard, I'll ask you, is it, is it a uh, full-throated war right now between Israel and Hamas in Gaza? Yeah, you know, the, 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 the pause in the fighting ended because Hamas refused, refused to release more women as, as the deal was supposed to, to involve. And they actually opened fire on us uh, before the ceasefire was uh, officially over. Uh, the fighting, ceasefire was supposed to be until 7 in the morning and already at 5.30 uh, Hamas was launching rockets into Israel. Uh, so they made a decision. And if their fighting is renewed, it's because Hamas refused to continue with the pause and continue releasing uh, Israeli women held hostage. Uh, we're fighting Hamas. We will defeat Hamas. And our goal remains the same, to get all our hostages home, to destroy Hamas's military, military machine and to create a new reality in Gaza, that we don't have a situation where, where terrorists in Gaza can cross the border in the middle of the night and butcher our children. No one should have to live like that. And Israelis definitely refuse to live in a fear of a constant threat by terrorists. And we saw what brutal and horrific violence they're capable of. Well, and I remember that during the pause, there was a terrorist attack by Hamas on Jerusalem. Three people lost their lives during the pause that was supposed to be carried out in, in Gaza. I'm just wondering, Ambassador, there are concerns by many, including the administration, the Biden administration, that has told Israeli officials they must approach their military operation in the south with more care for civilians than they did in the north. How do you see that concern and that caution? So the first thing is what happened uh, yesterday morning. Uh, uh, people going to work at a bus stop. Yeah, we're just mowed down by two terrorists, one with an automatic rifle and one with a pistol just randomly killing people. And we were lucky that we had police on the spot who could respond quickly. Otherwise, we could have had many more, many more killed. But that's who Hamas is. They target innocent civilians. Israel, on the contrary, uh, as a democratic country like the United States, we are targeting Hamas and we're making a maximum effort to see civilians uh, get out of harm's way. That's why we leaflet, as you said at the beginning of the report, we leaflet areas where in Gaza where we know there's going to be combat. We want civilians to move out. Before the fighting starts, we don't want to see them caught up in the crossfire between the Israeli Defense Forces and the Hamas terrorists. Ambassador, there are two million plus civilians or people in, in Gaza. Where are the people that are now in the south, many of whom were living in the north and actually moved to south after uh, your country dropped leaflets there telling them to go south? Now, where are those people and the ones that are in the south living permanently, supposed to go? So, first of all, not everyone in the South has to go. We're being very surgical, very specific about areas where we need to attack, where there are Hamas military uh, infrastructure, where we need to act. And so, once again, not everyone has to be relocated. And a small group will be uh, uh, temporarily relocated if 
if they want to get out of the, the fighting, and they should. And we've specified zones, and those maps have been shared with Secretary Blinken and others in the administration, specified, specified safer zones, civilians to be uh, for, the, for the period of the fighting so they, so they stay out of harm's way. I urge people to leave. We don't want to see them hurt. Ambassador Mark Rugavai, thank you very much for being with us this morning. Very much appreciate your time.